Hi guys, it is a dark, gloomy, windy day here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas. It's actually uh, now Sunday, February, February, this is maybe March 11, 2018, but I'm going to take some poetic license and we're going to pretend like it is Sunday, March 18th. 2018 cause your old doomsday prophet is uh, gonna take a break from the doomosphere to join his clueless lovable moron friends for the South by Southwest Music Festival for a few days and get into all that mess and get my mind off doom and gloom for a few days and so uh, I will not since I will be at a big picking party on a week from today, I'm going to pre-record Sunday, March 18th's Doomsday Sermon. Uh, and I cannot remember the, I'm sorry, the Alert Tribes member who sent me, uh, who sent me this uh, sermon. And I'm not sure I can figure out even how to put a link onto it. Uh, so I'm just going to sit here and read it for you. And this is from uh, Doomsday Prophet uh, Ken Smale, S-M-A-I-L. Ken Smale is a professor of the Department of Anthropology at Kenyon College and the author of several papers on population that have appeared in Population and Environment uh, and other journals. Okay, so this is from uh, my buddies at worldwatch.org. Worldwatch.org. I'm not sure what the date is on this. I think this is Dr. This, I think this rant is somehow, why am I thinking around 2014? But you better believe that everything uh, being said here is more true in 2018 than the day he wrote it. Uh, that goes without saying. And uh, Ken Smale is one more doomsday prophet who, uh, who I have invited to be uh, interviewed for my Voices of the Doomosphere uh, as, I just, as I just ratchet up dozens of invitations to people to uh, be interviewed for, by, by Hambone Little Tail and I have no idea. Uh, anyway, no, no, no what's going to happen with Voices of the Doomosphere so we're just going to hear a little bit of doom and gloom right here from worldwatch.org Take it away, Ken Smale, in his essay, Global Population Reduction, Confronting the Inevitable. The summary of this rant, looking past the near-term concerns that have plagued population policy at the political level, it is increasingly apparent, apparent that the long-term sustainability of civilization will require not just a leveling off of human numbers as projected over the coming half century, but a colossal, a colossal reduction in both population and consumption. Take it away. Ken Smale and educate the clueless morons about the single biggest problem facing the planet. <clears throat> Quote, it has become increasingly apparent over the past half century that there is a growing tension between two seemingly irre irreconcilable trends. On one hand, Moderate to conservative demographic projections indicate that global human numbers will almost certainly reach 9 billion, perhaps more, 
by mid-21st century. On the other hand, prudent and increasingly reliable scientific estimates suggest that the Earth's long-term sustainable human carrying capacity at, at what might be defined as an adequate to moderately comfortable developed world standard of living may not be much greater than two to three billion people. It may be considerably less, less particularly if the normative lifestyle, otherwise known as the level of consumption aspired to, is anywhere close to that of the United States. As a consequence of this modern-day Malthusian dilemma, it is past time to think boldly about the mid-range future and to consider alternatives that go beyond merely slowing or stopping the growth of the global population. The human species must develop and quickly implement a well-conceived, clearly articulated, flexible, equitable, and internationally coordinated program focused on bringing about a very significant reduction in human numbers over the next two or more centuries. Well, I think, uh, we're, Ken, we're going to get what you're asking for. I think it's pretty much safe to say we will see that over the next two or more centuries. Anyway, getting back to Gimp. <clears throat> this effort will likely require a global population shrinkage of at least two-thirds to three-fourths from a probable mid to late 21st century peak in the 9 to 10 billion range to a future, the 23rd century and beyond, population optim optimum of no more than 2 to 3 billion people. Obviously, a demographic change of this magnitude will require a major reorientation of human thought, human values, human expectations, and human lifestyles. There is no guarantee that such a program will be successful. Hmm, do you think so, Ken? But if humanity fails in this effort, nature will mo almost certainly impose an even harsher reality. As a practicing physical anthropologist and human evolutionary biologist, I am concerned that this rapidly mestatizing, yet still partly hidden, demograph demographic and environmental crisis could emerge as the greatest evolutionary ecological bottleneck that our species has yet encountered. <clears throat> Although the need for population reduction is controversial, it can be tested scientifically. The hypothesis may be falsified if it can clearly be shown that ongoing estimates of global population size over the next few hundred years will not exceed our increasingly accurate projections of both current and future optimal carrying capacities. <clears throat> Good luck on, uh, on uh, falsifying that one. However, the hypothesis will be confirmed if future global population size continues to exceed those carrying capacities by a significant margin. And even if the 2 to 3 billion optimal carrying capacity estimates turn out to be off 
I say a factor of two, achieving a global population optimum of four to six billion would still necessitate a very substantial reduction from the nine plus billion projected for mid 21st century. And of course, it goes without saying if they're off by a factor of two on the other end, which is exactly what they're off by, and we determine that it's actually under one billion people, uh, yes, then, then imagine what we're talking about. <clears throat> Getting back to Ken Smale's sermon. It is surprising how little scientific and public attention has been directed toward establishing quantifiable, testable, and socio-culturally agreed upon parameters for what the Earth's long-term human carrying capacity might actually be. Unfortunately, with only a few notable exceptions, Many otherwise well-qualified scientific investigators and public policy analysts have been rather hesitant, have been rather hesitant to take a clear and forthright position on this profoundly important matters. One wonders why inherent, one wonders why inherent caution concerns about their professional reputation, the increasingly specialized structure of both the scientific and political enterprises, or any of several other reasons. Given this issue's global nature and ramifications, perhaps the chief reason is simply scale paralysis scale paralysis, that enervating sense of individual and collective powerlessness when confronted by problems whose magnitude seems overwhelming. Certainly, the rough and ready human carrying capacity estimates of the more distant past do show considerable variation ranging from fewer than 1 billion, you know, in the past, to over 20 billion, uh, looking ahead. And it is obvious that it will be difficult to engender any sort of effective response to this crisis if the desired future population goals continue to be poorly understood and imperfectly articulated. It is, however, worthy of note that several investigators and organizations have developed reasonably well thought out positions on future global population optima, and those estimates have all clustered in the range of one to three billion people. I hope my hypothesis is wrong and that various democrat, demographic optimistic, optimists are correct in claiming that human numbers will begin to stabilize and then decline somewhat sooner than expected, but this optimism is warranted only by corroborative data. That is only if the above-mentioned irreconcilable numbers show unmistakable evidence of coming into much closer congruence. Clearly, assertions that the Earth might be able to support a population of 10, 15, or even 20 billion people, or if you're Alex Jones, one quadrillion people, for an indefinite period of time at a standard of living superior to the present are not only cruelly misleading, but almost certainly false. Notwithstanding our current addiction to continued and uninterrupted economic growth, humanity must recognize 
that there are finite physical, biological, and ecological limits to the Earth's long-term sustainable carrying capacity. And to judge by the growing concerns about maintaining the quality, stability, and or sustainability of our Earth's atmosphere, water, forest, croplands, fisheries, and so on, there is little, if any, doubt that many of these limits will soon be reached if they have not already been surpassed. Since at some point the damage stemming from the mutually reinforcing effects of excessive human reproduction and overconsumption of resources could well become irreversible and because there is only one Earth with which to experiment, it would undoubtedly be better for our species to err on the side of prudence, exercising wherever possible a cautious and careful stewardship. Perhaps it is time that the burden of proof on these matters, so long shouldered by the so-called neo-Malthusian pessimist, be shifted to the shoulders of the cornucopian optimist. Let them answer, what is the evidence that the earth can withstand without irreparable damage another two or more centuries during which global human numbers and per capita consumption increasingly exceed the Earth's optimal sustainable carrying capacity. In any event, having established a quantifiable and falsifiable frame of reference, it is time to make the case that current rhetoric about slowing the growth or even stabilizing global human numbers is clearly insufficient. Both the empirical data and inexorable logic suggest that our default position for the next two or three centuries ought to seek a very significant reduction in global human numbers. <clears throat> it is naive to hope that once a critical mass of concerned investigators begins to make a serious case for such a reduction, it would become much easier for scientists, environmentalists, politicians, economists, moralists, and other concerned citizens of the planet to speak forthrightly about humanity's critical need for population stabilization and shrinkage? At the least, they should not feel as though they are committing political, professional, or moral suicide by raising these issues. Time is increasingly precious and our window of opportunity for effective remedial action may not be open much longer, assuming it has not already closed. And I think this uh, sermon is four or five years old. <clears throat> Until Demonstrated otherwise, <clears throat> I would therefore argue that insufficiently restrained population growth should be considered the single most important feature in a complex and synergistic physical, ecological, biocultural, and socio-political landscape. Regulating human population size 
and confronting the numerous problems that will be engendered by its eventual and inevitable contraction should thus be accorded a central position within the modern dilemma and as such should be dealt with much more forthrightly and promptly than has heretofore been the case. More than half a century ago at the dawn of the nuclear age, Albert Einstein suggested that we would require a new manner of thinking if humankind were to survive. Even though the population explosion is neither an instantaneous nor as spectacular as its nuclear counterpart, the ultimate consequences may be just as real and potentially just as devastating as the so-called nuclear winter scenarios promulgated in the early 1980s. That there will be a large-scale reduction in global human numbers over the next two or three centuries appears to be inevitable. The primary issue seems to be whether this process will be under our conscious human control and hopefully relatively benign or whether it will turn out to be unpredictably chaotic, I would say predictably chaotic and perhaps catastrophic. We must begin our new manner of thinking about this critically important global issue now so that Einstein's prescient and legitimate concerns about human and civilizational survival into the 21st century and beyond may be addressed as rapidly, fully, and humanely as possible. And then uh, Brother Ken Smale closes with a quote from uh, a 1970 quote from my Humpty Drumpty tribe uh, hero, the late Garrett Hardin, closing out his sermon, quoting Brother Garrett, Quote, don't speak to me of shortage. My world is vast and has more than enough for no more than enough. There is a shortage of nothing save will and wisdom, but there is a longage of people. There you go. Uh, thank you. Amen, Brother Garrett Harden, and amen, Brother Ken Smale. And I will send Brother Ken Smale one more email, seeing if he can uh, find an hour in his busy schedule to uh, talk to the few people on this planet having the discussion about the single biggest, uh, the number one problem on planet Earth. There's too goddamn many people on this planet. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up this preloaded uh, doomsday sermon and I think I'm I'm hungry. I think it's time to eat some factory farmed pork egg rolls. What do you think, little dog? Are you ready for some of that factory farmed good stuff? Smoke them if you got them, guys. We know goddamn well since that uh, since that was written in the World Watch Institute's website, however many years ago, not one fucking person uh, on this planet has paid any attention to it. That Brother Ken uh, is preaching to the goddamn, probably ever shrinking choir, and that every single day since that, uh, that, that, uh, 
sermon was published uh, that there have been about, what, a, close to a quarter million people, I think 235 million people have been born on that uh, every single day on this planet, and about three-fourths of them have been born in sub-Saharan Africa uh, since those words were written. But anyway, uh, preach on, brother. We need more preachers preaching to the choir because there sure as hell ain't anybody else listening. While Alex Jones, with, with, his, with his two million subscribers and his two billion views on YouTube, claiming with no trace of irony that this planet can support one billion people, every one of them, with a gas-sucking car and a power boat for eternity. We are so fucked. Bye, guys.